is footage. So my question is, of all these folks, whether you're from Mexico or other... You're going to be one of the numbers. Yes. The, right. By the way, yeah. they're, 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 you, you think those... These people, are, if they're willing to come to our country illegally, that must mean something. And that springs a, a, a loud volume to me saying, <clears throat> wait a minute, if it's that bad there that they're willing to take a chance to come here and get deported, ostracized, kicked out, is the equivalent of people living inside the inner cities in our own country running out to the suburbs. But the people that's coming from the city to the suburbs, if they're not a certain class or not a certain thing, then they're not welcome to suburbs. So they're stuck inside that same crime-infested war zone. It may not be bombs being being blown up. It may not be refugee camps, but they're 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 drugs, <laughs> they're shooting, there's 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 prostitution, there's all these things. And and if we if we if we as Americans say we, we care about the world and we love the world, we need to to add to your point, we need to set up programs that are gonna be able to get them over here legally quicker than not. When do people slow down enough not to worry if they're going to get elected, not to worry how much money they're going to get, and slow down to say, what are the barriers, if we're just talking about immigration amongst all the other things, what is the number one barrier right now to folks coming in from other countries? What is their number one barrier? So let's start that and let's itemize of things important. So I would say the number one barrier is, um, is can they speak English? There's a barrier to something and you, you can't get to it until you get over it or through it. So I think we need to itemize what's preventing all these things from happening. Get off these political platforms and somebody just get a regular crew of people together like us and just start writing down all these barriers. Now how do we address number one? Education. Now how do we address number two? And keep going. And I think we're a sorry country if we don't believe that our children starting from the ages of kindergarten should not be starting and speaking a, a sp like Spanish or French or speaking a foreign language. I, I think it's pretty um, pretentious of us to think that you should just speak our language. On the contrary, if you take a look at immigration in the 19th century, which by the way was the great century of immigration, though more of it was really done in the 20th, uh, you'll find that immigrants came from wherever they came, which were diver a, a diverse number of places. And they came to this country and chose to speak the single language of this country. It's interesting to, 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 to reflect, by the way, that before our Pledge of Allegiance that we know, that came about in the late 1870s, 1880s, there was another common pledge in which it was pledged to the one flag, one country, one language. And that was a, a, an absolute feature of the melting pot that Everyone learned to speak English. I definitely think that you should know English or should have some kind of, some English in order to communicate, but that's part of your culture. Culture means in order for you to have a culture, you have to have a language. And then a lot of people coming over here, whether they're coming from Bosnia, whether they're coming from uh, Africa, whether, wherever they're coming from, um, Mexico, whatever, that's part of their culture. And they don't want to give their culture up because they don't want to give who they are up, and they shouldn't. But what they should do, they should be willing to add to the community. But they have to learn English in order in order to be part of the community. I'm thinking what's happening is the one who are deprived that's coming over. And th that's where the problem is, because the ones who are educated, they're coming in the right way. Un unfortunately, you know? Irvin, not enough of them are coming in the right, right way. Right. And uh, no one's speaking about the, the deficit of immigration. Right now, it's hard as hell to get an H-1B visa. And uh, th that is what you need for most uh, skilled uh, folks. Uh, my son's company desperately needed someone who could work with uh, uh, his technology. Couldn't find it in St. Louis among Americans. Couldn't get find an H get, couldn't get an H-1B visa for someone from elsewhere. Happily found someone in Canada, and thanks to NAFTA. Canada offers a TN visa, which is easy as pie to get hold of. And so we have this young lady who is, has been working in his company for several years now under a TN visa because we don't have enough people in St. Louis, Americans, who can do this work. We are, and, and we're educating foreign students in college 
and don't have enough H-1B visas for them to stay in the United States mm -hmm. and contribute to our economy. But get, they, then getting back on trying to, what we have in place now, getting making it better, it's going to be more than one thing. It will be the border. It will be uh, different sectors. Maybe the sector we do say we, that we need to fulfill is the landscaping, and then that's the people that we would like to bring over. So this we have to make sure that we're taking the charge and saying this is what we would like to fulfill. This is what we're trying to find. And then put the program together for that particular reason.